So today we are factoring trinomials when a is equal to 1. So I'm going to explain a little bit more about what this means in a minute. But before I get into this, I just want to tell you, uh, show you kind of what we'll be doing. If I asked you to do this, x plus 2 times x uh, minus 5. Yes, you're going to FOIL that together, right? Right? That's a binomial times a binomial. We're going to FOIL. So let's go ahead and FOIL this together. First, you would get X outers. 3x minus 10. I'm not there yet. Outers minus 5x. Inners plus 2x, plus 2x and last. And then minus 10. Right. And then when I put all those together, I get x squared minus 3x minus 10. Okay. Today, what we are going to be doing is going the other way. I'm going to give you the trinomial, and we're going to figure out how to get back to these. Remember what factors are. It's just two things that you multiply together to get a bigger number, right? So like factors of 10, 2 times 5. 2 times 5 gets me back to 10, right? So that's why some of the factors of 10 are 2 and 5. If I multiply 2 times 5, I get 10. If I multiply these th two things together, I get this. So these are called the factors of that. So we are going the other way. Instead of multiplying them, multiplying them together, we're going to break them apart. So it's just like doing the factor tree on the number 50 that we did yesterday. Remember we took 50 and then we split it up? We're doing the same thing. We're starting here and we're going to split it up. So I'm going to show you how to do all of that. Wait, but the, the, on the paper, it doesn't look like how you started. Because we're going to start here. And then we're going to go backwards to get here. I just want you to have an understanding of what we're doing. So instead of multiplying the two numbers together to get this, we're going to take this and split it apart into its factors. You follow me so far? Yeah? OK. So that's the gist. I'm going to show you how, but that's the idea. I'm going to take this and split it up into its two binomials. So when I multiply those two binomials together, I get right back to the original. All right? So I told you I would go over factoring trinomials when a equals 1. Factoring, so that's just splitting it up into the two numbers so that when I multiply it back together, I get back to the original. Trinomials, you know that word already. What's a trinomial? Three-term polynomial. Look, one, two, three. There's a three-term polynomial. So that's what we'll be dealing with. One, two, three-term polynomials. And then what's this business when a equals one? Well, let me explain. So a trinomial, trinomial form. Here's how they are all basically set up. Ax squared plus bx plus c. A, B, and C are just different numbers, okay? So A, B, and C are, um, I don't know, let's say any integer. Well, they don't have to be integers. Let's say, let's just say any number. So A is just the number in front of the x squared, B is the number in front of the x, and C is the constant all by itself. So in this example right here, what's the value of A? 1. If there's nothing written there, it's a 1, right? So A would be 1. What would B be? Negative 3, and C is negative 10. Get the idea? So it's just A, B, C. So far so good? All right. So we're going to take a trinomial, and I'm going to go through the steps how you factor this back into these two. It's actually pretty simple as long as A is 1. When A isn't 1 anymore, it gets a little bit more difficult, and we're going to do that later on this week and for like a month following that. <laughs> But anyway, 
Oh, this never goes away. Factory trinomials will never go away. Ah, uh, you can't. It depends how you're. If you're gonna solve the quadratic, you can. Well, I mean, if you're. Oh, okay. So let's let's start off with a nice one. How about x squared plus? Oh, I don't know. How about seven uh, x plus twelve? So let me give you the steps on how to factor this trinomial when a is one. Okay. So step one. Let's see, where do I want to put these? How to factor a trinomial when a equals one. Step one. You want to find factors of C that add up to be B. What? Miss Sabia, you already lost me. Don't worry. I'll find you. Okay, you ready? What letter, what number here is C? 12. 12. 12. So I want factors of 12. So sometimes what I like to do is I just like to put a 12 and I just list numbers that multiply together to be 12. So 1 times 12 is 12. What else? 2 and 6. 2, and six. two times 6 is 12. 3 and 4. Three and four. Are there any other combinations of numbers that multiply together to get me 12? Doesn't matter. That's it. Okay? So, what I want to do now is I want factors of C. So, here's all the factors of C that add to be B. So, when I add these two digits together, I get 13. What's B, though, in this? Seven. Seven. So, that's not the right pair. Two and six, those add to be eight. That's not the right pair. Three and four. Three and four. Add to be 7. So once you find the factor pair that adds to be this number, you're almost done, literally. So remember my goal. Can I just <coughs> scoot this away for one second? Remember what I'm doing. I'm starting here, and I'm going back to these. I'm there. So once I have that, in step two, I'm literally just going to write those two factors here. I'm going to put x and then one of the factors, and then x and then the other factor. You'll see. So. I got three and four, so my answer is literally, and since these are both positive numbers, I'm gonna have x plus three and x plus four. If you foil x plus three and x plus four together, you're gonna get right back here. Try it. Foil these two together, see if you actually get that. Do you? Well, how about that? It's magic. Now, sometimes kids question, well, how do you know which factor goes where? Like, could you have put the 4 there and the 3 there? Yeah, it doesn't matter because you're just multiplying them together. So the order doesn't matter. The signs matter. This was an easy one because everything was positive. Let's try another easy one before we move on to tough people. But that's it. That's literally it. 26. Try this one. X squared plus, oh, let's do 10X plus 16. Minus seven. I'm giving you, the, here's the original problem. So this is where you start. And now you need to list factors of 16 and find the pair that adds up to be 10. You have the answer? Hold on to it. Does everybody have the answer? 
give me the two numbers that multiply to be 16 but add to be 10. 8 and 2. So that means my answer is just x plus 8, x plus 2. And it doesn't matter if you had the 2 there and the 8 there. That does not matter. What matters is you got those two binomials. One binomial should be x plus 8, one should be x plus 2. What, these? You need the two numbers that multiply to be 16 that add to be 10. Okay, let's, let's try another positive one. X squared plus 5X plus 4. Try that. Once you get it, it's pretty easy. Sarah, go ahead. Yeah. One and four. One times four is four, and one plus four gets me to five. One more. I'll try and trick you. Danielle, you got it? Go ahead. What'd you say? X plus 10. Yes, isn't it just 10 and 10? Right? 10 times 10 gets me 100, but 10 plus 10 is 20. You can, everybody please pay attention, if your answer is the, <coughs> excuse me, the exact same binomial, X plus 10 times X plus 10, you can also write this as x plus 10 squared. It doesn't matter. I don't care how you write it. It's up to you. But if it's multiple choice and you don't see this and you see this, you know you got to pick that. Or vice versa. Okay? Any questions? I don't think I have time to go into um, negatives, so we'll save that for tomorrow.